takes us who are dead in sin and makes us to be alive in Christ through baptism. We rejoice this morning with the, the Shanks family as Wyatt joins the family of believers through this water of regeneration. May the Lord bless our worship of him today. We begin with our, our first hymn. We're going to sing the first three <coughs> verses of the baptism hymn, hymn 648. <laughs> Sins, removes your guilt, 
and strengthens you to defeat Satan's power. His promise is for you and for your children, and he will never forsake you. Your sins are forgiven, you are clothed with Christ, you are at peace with God now and forever. Amen. Amen. We hear now the Gospel according to Mark. People were bringing little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, placed his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the gospel of our Lord. Amen. Amen. Wyatt, Kenneth, Shanks, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Receive the sign of the cross on your head and on your heart to mark you as one who has been redeemed by Christ the crucified. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit and has forgiven all your sins. May he strengthen you, Wyatt, with his grace all the days of your life. Peace be with you. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks, most merciful Father, that you have received Wyatt as your own child and made him a member of Christ's body, the Church. Now we pray, grant to him and to all your Church on earth, that being dead to sin, we may live to righteousness, and being buried with Christ into his death, we may also share in his resurrection, so that with all your saints, we may inherit eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Peace be with you. Congratulations. We continue with the singing of our next of our hymn, verses 4 and 5 of the first piece. <laughs> Prosperous people, Israel, 
we can see as Americans, we are living in the same type of situation, very, very blessed. The danger is we could love these things more than God and His Word. Woe to you who are complacent in Zion, you who feel secure on Mount Samaria. You distinguish people of the leading nation to whom the house of Israel comes. Travel to Kelna and look. Go from there to Hamath Rabbah and go down to Gath of the Philistines. Are you better than those kingdoms? Are their territory, territories greater than your territory? You who are trying to put off the evil day, you bring near the session for violence. Those who lie on ivory beds, sprawling upon their couches, eating lambs from the flock and calves straight from the stall, improvising tunes on the lyre, composing music for themselves on musical instruments like David, drinking large bowls of wine. They slather themselves with the most expensive perfume oils, but they do not grieve over the ruin of Joseph. That is why they will go into exile as the first of the exiles. Those who sprawl out at their feasts for the dead will depart. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is Psalm 146. It's found in the Grace Psalter. We're singing 146D, which is the same as hymn 619 in the Blue Hymn Book.
from the letter written to the Hebrews, chapter 13, where various encouragements are given to God's people. Basically, love the Lord, listen to his word, obey it, which means love the Lord with all your heart and love all people, just as you love yourself. We read from Hebrews, chapter 13. Continue to show brotherly love. Do not fail to show love to strangers, for by doing this some have welcomed angels without realizing it. Remember those in prison, as if you were fellow prisoners, and those who are mistreated, as if you yourselves were also suffering bodily. Marriage is to be held in honor by all. The marriage bed is to be kept undefiled. For God will judge sexually immoral people and adulterers. Keep your life free from the love of money, and be content with what you have. For God has said, I will never leave you, and I will never forsake you. So then we say with confidence, The Lord is my helper, and I will not be afraid. What will man do to me? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise. Hallelujah. If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. Hallelujah. <laughs>
Christ, both in this life and forever in heaven. Amen. God's word for our encouragement today are the words Jesus spoke to his disciples, where he reminded, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. Brothers and sisters in Christ, already a few years ago that there were commercials on TV, a series of commercials that went something like this. Baseball tickets, $50. Hot dogs at the game, $7. Programs and pennants, $20. Time spent with your son, crisis. That was a MasterCard commercial, and they made several of them, and their slogan was this, there are some things that money can't buy, but for everything else, there's MasterCard. How true that is. You can use your credit card for so many things, but there are things in life you just can't buy. And those are blessings as are everything, those are blessings from God. The greatest of all treasures, let us be reminded this morning, are those really sometimes you can't even see. Like our Lord Jesus dying on the cross, rising from the grave for our justification, now preparing a place for us in heaven, where the angels carrying loved ones up to heaven to their place, priceless. May God help us to see where our real treasure in this world lies is found in His Word. Because His Word gives us comfort and hope for the future, and His Word alone can create faith, saving faith in our hearts. We heard last Sunday in the Gospel reading how Jesus warned, you can't serve two masters, you cannot serve God and mammon or wealth. It's impossible. You will love one and you will despise the other. The Pharisees overheard that comment and they sneered at Jesus. They sneered at him because they actually did love money. And Jesus warned them, what is highly regarded among people, it actually is an abomination in God's sight. And this is now where Jesus goes on to tell us this story, which some have called a parable, but if it's a parable, by definition, it's the only one where a person in the story is mentioned by name. We have before us a story of what happens to two people. It's really a summary of what happens to all people on Judgment Day. First of all, there was a rich man dressed in purple and fine linen, living in luxury every day. He had it made. He was living the good life. Beautiful home, plenty of food on his table, plenty of clothing, fine clothing to choose from. And in comparison, there was Lazarus. His name, by definition, means I trusted in the Lord. This Lazarus didn't have it so good in life. At least at the end of his life, he was a beggar. He had to be brought and laid at this rich man's gate, hoping, hoping that he would get crumbs that would fall from, the, from this rich man's table. He was probably not dressed very well. He was covered with sores. The only comfort it seemed in life he got, although I don't really know how comforting it would be, is having dogs licking his wounds. As we hear the story so far that Jesus tells, we're reminded of the injustices in this world, and we're led to ask right away, why would God allow that to happen? How could one person have so much and another person have so little? We might be tempted to say, God is not fair. But we get quickly into the story of justice as God says, both of them died. Both of these men died just as all people die because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We're 
We're told, first of all, the beggar Lazarus died and angels carried him to Abraham's side, just like we sang in the last hymn. Why is it significant? Abraham's mentioned, well, Abraham is called, and rightfully so, the, belief, the father of all who believe. Certainly, Abraham is in heaven. He believed, and Scripture say, it was credited to him as righteousness. So, this Lazarus, who trusted in the Lord, was now taken to be with Abraham and with the saints and the angels in heaven. Understand clearly, it's not because he had a miserable life that the Lord is going to make it up to him now. This man trusted in the Lord, just like Abraham trusted in the Lord. And those that put their trust in the Lord will never be put to shame. While well, Lazarus is enjoying eternity with the Lord in, at the right hand of God, we're told the rich man also died and was buried, and his soul was sent to hell. He was in torment. He was in misery. Enduring those flames on his body, the sores that Lazarus had now are multiplied infinitely, causing him great pain as he's in hell. He calls out to Abraham, Father Abraham, I call you Father because you're an Israelite and I'm an Israelite. That's where it ends. It wasn't you're a believer, I'm a believer. He saw Abraham and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in misery. Give me something to take away this excruciating pain. But Abraham said, Son, Remember, in your lifetime, you received your good things. God kept pouring out his grace upon you, giving all of the blessings to you, for you to enjoy, but also for you to share. But you did not return and give thanks. You did not worship the Lord. As a result, you are no longer comforted. You are separated from God's love forever. There is no coming over to either side. There is a great chasm between heaven and hell. Lazarus is enjoying the comforts of heaven through faith. You are enjoying, enjoying, you are enduring the agony of hell because of your unbelief. Brothers and sisters in Christ, this is the story of God's judgment. There is no in-between. There is no other possibility. Heaven is for those that believe and are baptized. Hell is for those that do not believe. That's the warning. Don't be like the rich man that pursues the good things in life, the nice home, the good food and clothing and everything else and more. Don't pursue that at the expense of not listening to God and His Word. Because you cannot, as Jesus perfectly makes clear, you cannot love the things and God. You will love one, and you will hate the other. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let us heed these words with caution and warning. Let us pursue that which is our true treasure, the gospel. Let's hear the good news which makes us wise to salvation through faith in Christ. Let's be reminded that although we don't have that finest of cars or finest of homes, we've got the finest of homes prepared for us in heaven. That all because of God and His grace. Let us be reminded that although we may not eat the choicest of foods right now, or they have the choicest of clothing, in heaven, we will enjoy that wedding feast with the Lord. Not that we'll ever be hungry or thirsty, but we'll be dining with the Lord and we'll be robed in His righteousness forever. No sores on our body, no pain, no trials, no sorrow, no sin, no death. That's our hope, our confidence. And that's what we get when we sit at Jesus' feet, listening to His word. 
Let us be reminded that this is the treasure we are to seek. Listen to his word. Come and eat what is good, what is free. Enjoy it that your life, your soul may live. Realizing, as Jesus tells us, realizing that his, ju his judgment is sealed. He can't change his eternal judgment. He thinks of his family back home, his five brothers. He thinks, I don't want them to be here with me to have to endure such hardship, such pain and agony. So please, Abraham, could you make it so that Lazarus will rise from the dead? Go and visit my brothers. They'll realize something miraculous has happened, and they'll come to understand what is really important in life. They won't make the same mistakes I have in life. Maybe humanly speaking, that sounds like a great idea. Give some proof, Lord, and they'll believe. But Abraham says, they have Moses and the prophets, they have the Old Testament, they have the scriptures. God breathed, which are able to make people wise to salvation. It's the power of God to salvation. Faith comes from hearing the message. They've got that. They've got people proclaiming the word to them. This is their time of grace on earth. They can hear it, believe, and be saved. The rich man is convinced that's not going to work. Maybe he's thinking it didn't work on me, so why would it work on my family? They're not going to believe simply because somebody tells them passages from the Bible. Abraham says if they don't listen to the Bible, to the scriptures, they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. You think about it, Jesus' ministry, filled with miracles. They didn't believe. He made the lame to walk. They accused him of healing on the Sabbath. How dare he? He made the blind to see, the deaf to hear. He brought people to life who were dead. They just envied him more. They wanted to get him out of the picture completely. They weren't brought to faith by those miracles. And even Jesus' own resurrection, where he clearly showed that he was with power, the Son of God. He is the one who judges all people, the living and the dead. But they made excuses. No, someone came and stole his body. They had what could bring them to faith, what alone brings people to faith, and that's the Word. Dear friends, that's why the Word of God is so important for you and me and for our loved ones today. As long as we live in this veil of tears, it's the Word. The Word of God that's been given to us so that we may be made wise to salvation. These are written that you may believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and that by believing in Him, you have life in His name. Maybe sometimes we quickly say, oh, I've heard this stuff before. I've heard it before. Great. What a blessing. How rich you are to have heard this story times before. But how rich you will remain if you continue in these things, if you remain in Jesus and listen to his word of life. The temptation is to give up and pursue other things. Those things in life, the devil says, those things will make us happy. But all those things do, as we heard last scripture reading, yep, last week was, they pierce us with many griefs. We're just never content with just that much. When we have more, then we're afraid of people coming and stealing it. We can't be at peace. And when we die, we don't take anything with us. So what is your real treasure? The Lord reminds us, it's not your earthly wealth. It's not that $50 baseball ticket or the hot dogs purchased there or the pennants, programs. It's more special than things. It's time spent with the Lord. It's sitting at his feet, listening to his word, 
with fellow believers is a special blessing. And then be able to go and tell people that heaven is their home. You know, everything seems to take on a whole new meaning when a brother or sister in Christ is called home. All the scripture readings seem to remind us you've got hope. Eternal life is yours. This past week, the Lord called to himself Jim Bach, our brother in Christ, his servant. Jim was so excited about this opportunity to finally be with the Lord. And that's because throughout his life, he was brought to God's house, or he came to God's house, where he was strengthened by word and sacrament, reminded this is his greatest treasure. And he certainly loved to sing about that too in all of the beautiful songs we have. Hardships come to all people. Hardships come even to Christians because they bear the cross. They confess Jesus. But think of the joy. Think of the eternal bliss that's Jim's and all the saints in the Lord. Not because of anything he's done. Not because he's suffered so hard in life. But because of God's mercy and grace. Those that trust in the Lord are not disappointed. May God help us to see that our greatest riches do lie in his holy word. His word gives us hope for the future. His word alone creates faith and keeps us in that saving faith. To God be the glory. Amen. Please rise. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. Amen. We join now in confessing our Christian faith. We use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated now for prayer. <clears throat> o God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your mercies, which are new every day. We thank you that through baptism you have made us to be your child. You've made us to be an heir of heaven. We pray that you would forgive us for all of our acts of rebellion, where we have chosen instead to follow our ways instead of your ways, where we have loved the things of this world instead of loving you first and foremost. As you have forgiven us in Christ, help us to now live for you, to serve you and all people by sharing the gospel with them. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you came into this world to seek us who were lost. You have redeemed us through your perfect life and innocent death on the cross, and through your resurrection from the grave. Keep us in your word that we may continue to grow in the knowledge of you and your grace, and that we may confess you as Lord and Savior, and look forward to that home you are preparing for us in heaven. O Holy Spirit, we thank you for the peace and joy you give to us through word and sacrament. Keep us faithful to you. And keep us from ever being ashamed to sit at your feet and listen to your word and obey it. Keep us also from ever being ashamed of sharing your word with our loved ones. For we want what is truly best for them. And the best and greatest gift is to share your word of life with them. That we can spend eternity with them in paradise. O Lord God, we thank you for the kindness and compassion you've shown to your servant and our brother in Christ, Jim Bob. 
You have been with him all of his days, never forsaking him, and you have called him now to his eternal home. We thank you for the grace and mercy you've shown to him, and we thank you especially for the faith you've given to him, that he could confess you as Lord and now spend eternity with you. We pray for those that are hospitalized. We pray for our brother, the Lord Ress, who is recovering from surgery. Continue to give wisdom to his doctors and the medical staff. Make him stronger so that he can come, return home, and return to your house, Lord willing, to worship you. We pray for all who are sick and cannot be with us today. Be with them and guide them and strengthen them with your word. We thank you, O oh Lord, for the blessings you've given to us. May we never take your word for granted. May we joyfully sit at your feet and hear your word of life and praise you for your salvation. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now our offering, our thank offering, will be brought before the Lord. Lord, we thank you for your goodness, which knows no end. Your, we thank you for your unfailing love. You have so richly blessed us with so many things in this world. Lead us to not only thank you, but also to praise you with our wealth, with our talents, and with our time of grace you've so graciously given us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We continue our order of service now as we sing hymn 678. Thank you.
rise for prayer. <coughs> Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We also join in praying. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours.
We talk about a testing of faith that they are enduring, and yet, by God's grace, they're shining brightly. They're going to worship service amidst the bombings and things, missiles. Uh, God continue to be with his people there, and may God bring peace quickly to those nations. Uh, LWS rally is set for October 8th. Um, I suppose, should there be, uh, usually isn't there an offering plate set up for door offering prior to those rallies? Yes. Yes, okay. I'll put one out, but being a short notice, I'll try to have it in the bulletin for next time. Um, Wells Youth Night planned the 23rd, and everybody, young people, teenagers are invited. Please register online for that. That will take place at Northland, Luther High School. If you're interested in meditations or forward in Christ, please sign up and please pay for those. Now, okay, I got one thing in my mind. Uh, a, a brief little thing. So Tim Hortel has raised some pumpkins, small or large. If you're interested in having any pumpkins, purchasing them, um, he's selling them. Talk to him at the fellowship or after church. I believe he's asking $5 for smaller ones and $6 for larger ones. Um, also, so now, um, I believe from our congregation, we have a presentation now for our baptismal person, for, for Wyatt, from our Ladies' Aid, or Labors of Love group. meeting today at 11 and there's an elders meeting at 1045 so I think what's going to happen there's a lot going on I think we're going to have the family do their picture taking while we're ushered out you can do your photography and then um, kids need to practice a song for mission festival choir needs to practice we got birthday recognition down there uh, we got a lot going on so I'd say family of Wyatt. You stick around for pictures. Everybody else head down there. We'll get the baptism thing, or birthday recognition thing done down there. All right. May the Lord bless you and keep you.